Hey, what is up? My name is Rubidium. Today we're looking at false color and how to use it as an additional, very useful tool to get the correct exposure with your digital cinema camera. So the first tool of exposure um, that most people learn to use and understand is the light meter, like this guy, uh, shooting at 24 frames a second. We're on ISO. I should be shooting at uh, 2.8, which is what the lens is set to. So. This is a great way to get exposure that doesn't involve a camera, so you're not waiting for people to set up. Um, the downside is that if you, uh, it's great for stills photography, um, and if the person is staying where they are the entire scene, that's awesome. But very often you have people moving through a scene, uh, moving through different light values, and it doesn't really work to uh, you know follow the actor through the whole scene, constantly clicking your light meter to get different values and different readings. The next tool is the waveform, as you can see here, and I have it set to spot the little orange triangle here. When I put it on neutral gray, happily I'm wearing my 18% gray t-shirt today. If I fill the, the square with that, it will give me a reading of around 50%, which is sort of where I want it to be. Waveforms with spot are particularly great, and it's the way that I have used exposure for most of my single shots. The issue is that if you have multiple people in the frame, it's hard to gauge where their face is on the waveform, because the waveform, as you can see, my hand here is moving around in the waveform, but you're not really sure what value it is. It's below 50%, but because the waveform represents the entire vertical um, line, I'm getting this bright area, this dark area, and my hand all being averaged to that value. The limitation is that you then have to move your camera around to try and find exposure rather than locking to the frame that you have. Um, this is particularly difficult if you have mounted your camera on a dolly or a movie or a steady cam. You can't really see, especially if you're not the one operating, what part of the image is what value. So the huge advantage of false color and having a false color um, able monitor is that it shows you what part of the image is what value without ha you having to extrapolate from a waveform or guess from the um, spot form. Important part of this and the thing that a lot of people miss is that you need to um, have a output LUT from the camera or in the monitor to use your false color. If you put false color on a log image, um, like a raw log image, everything will be shades of gray. It won't really give you a good indication of your final image. You need to apply your Rec. 709 LUT first before you put your um, false color on. So here we see that the highlights in my face are peaking around 80% with, with the LUT activated, uh, which is where I want them. And you can see that the background, background back here is 30 and 40%, which is sort of where I want them. And the only things that are the the very bright purple, <clears throat> uh, the deep, deep shadow. So I'm getting um, nothing's really red except for the blown out lights. Nothing's really purple except for the um, really, really dark areas. Uh, my skin and my t-shirt are both in that um, 50 to 70% area. Again, this is Rec. 709 values. This is with the LUT applied. This is totally different than the waveform where I would have um, the 18% gray at you know 35 or 40 percent um, with the LUT applied and the contrast applied we're going to look we want our um, skin and our 18 percent gray much higher so the monitor that I'm using for this is the Feel World Ultrabyte 279 FW 279 um, the huge advantage of this is that it has false color built in which of course the C200 does not um, and it also unlike the um, Blackmagic 7 inch video assist has a display on the right hand side that shows you what those values correlate to because the black magic one you have to always like i always have to look up on my phone what particular values are what color this is a great little monitor for what it costs it's around you know if you get the hdmi only or the sdi and hdmi one they're still under 400 dollars um, they're seven inch they're super bright you can see them outside of course, the big advantage of using a SDI monitor rather than an HDMI monitor with the C200 is that the C200 only projects the LUT um, that you need to use with false color over the SDI. It also only uses the waveform over the SDI. So if you're using an HDMI external monitor, you're gonna be in hot water. 
I also prefer this to the Blackmagic Video Assist because the Blackmagic Video Assist is also a recorder, um, which adds weight and adds extra power that I don't really want. Um, the Blackmagic, I would only get about 40 minutes out of with um, the Panasonic Sony batteries. This thing lasts for you know a good hour and a half, two hours um, on the small battery and about three or four hours on a large one. That's my look at using false color as an exposure tool um, for digital cinema. Once you get the hang of it, it becomes really, really valuable and it becomes something that you can use to kind of check your thinking of your light meter or really just as a, um, a way to expose a whole bunch of subjects in a whole bunch of ways without having to spot meter or guess with your histogram. Thanks very much for watching guys. Uh, leave your questions in the comments. I will see you next time.